The tank system is represented in this image. We want to control the liquid level in the tank by manipulating the input flow. We have access to the level height through the reading of a level sensor. The output flow depends on the resistance of the outlet pipe, and in this example, it is fixed. The input minus the output flow is equal to the accumulation in the tank. This difference is also equal to the derivative of the volume, which can be rewritten as the area of the tank times the derivative of the height. The output flow is a function of gravity and is equal to the pressure due to the liquid mass in the tank divided by the resistance to flow. A small output line would offer more resistance than a larger one. After some algebraic manipulation, we arrive at a first-order differential equation that we can now represent as a function of a constant k and a time constant tau. Something interesting to note is that if you divide the numerator and denominator of this transfer function by the resistance and make it really large, the system tends to a pure integrator. All right, so this is my MATLAB script. Here we have the parameters of our system. So we have the sampling rate, the resistance to the output flow, the density of the fluid, gravity, and then the diameter of our tank. Then here, this is the calculation, the formula to get the gain. And this came from the deduction that we just saw. Here I have my time constant. Then I have the, my parameters for my transfer function. A0, A1, B0, and B1. And here, what I'm doing is using the TF function to calculate a transfer function using those parameters. And finally, I'm getting that transfer function and using the C2D parameter to uh, convert it from continuous to discrete time. So now, we're going to run this. So now I have all the results here in my workspace. Now, I can come here to uh, my simulation and for now I'm going to just go ahead and comment this part here and we're going to see in a second what this does this is just like validation so now I have a step input of half 0.5 this is going to through, go through a PID I uh, use the PID of the tuner to come up with this then I have my transfer function here that is getting B0, A0 and B1 from uh, the workspace and finally I'm scoping the result so now if I run this here we are I have PID and it's stabilizing around 0 0.5 perfect so for example now I can come here and say 0.85 overshoots a little bit and then it stabilizes right around 0.85 so now just as a sanity check I want to make sure that uh, dimensionally this works so let's analyze the system in a situation that we can't lose any water from the tank come back to MATLAB and increase this resistance to a very high number so now it's like a thousand it's practically closed so then I run this again to update everything uncomment this part here run my simulation so what's gonna happen is because that valve is closed there's no way for the tank to lose any water it's gonna overshoot and it's not gonna be able to go back to the reference this is exactly what we're seeing, so it overshoots and then it can't 
really go back to uh, 0.85 but by making this it's easy for us to analyze what's happening so here I have roughly uh, 1.2 meters of my controlled variable so if you look here if you scope the output of the PID this is the flow that the controller is commanding to the pump right and this is uh, in volumetric units uh, cubic meters per second so if we integrate this signal, what we get is the volume of water that the PID pumped into the tank. If we divide that volume of water by P times the square of the diameter divided by 4, we get the height. So if this works, then what we, sh what we scope in here should match what we scope here. So let's check this out. And yeah, so it's exactly the same value. All right, so back to our script. Back to one. Run this again to update the parameters and everything. And uh, if you remember, the last thing that I did on this script was to transform the continuous transfer function to a discrete transfer function. So let's see how that looks like. Alright, so this is our discrete transfer function. Uh, the reason why we want to do this is because um, we're going to run this on real time and you can't run a continuous system on a real time controller. You got to discretize it and you got to discretize it using the same sample time that you're going to be running your PLC test. So now, this is another simulating simulation using this discrete plant. So as you can see, we're deploying this model rather than the previous one. And here I create a subsystem. Inside this subsystem, we have this ZPID. I tuned this PID a little bit differently. I didn't want the overshoot to happen, so I slowed it down quite a lot. and I wrap everything inside a subsystem block. And we're gonna see why I did that in a second. So carrying on with our simulation, this is our set point of half. Just gonna run it. This uh, Z controller uh, that I retuned, it takes way longer to reach that steady state. For this purpose here, my biggest thing was to not overshoot, so I don't really care about the set in time. And it works nicely. Uh, I reached my set point and it's pretty stable. The reason why I have wrapped the controller in a subsystem thing like this is because now I can come here and generate PLC code with the MATLAB generator so this is my generated code I've made a mistake here and I target the code disease but uh, what you can do is uh, go to settings and PLC code generation here, target ID. You can select Twincat 3. Select Twincat 3, apply. Copy this code and place it into my Twincat project along with the gains of uh, my with along with the parameters of my Z transfer function so I can simulate this in real time using Twinkle. 